the arrival of the Honorable Senate President and the Senators of the Republic of the Philippines. The 44th session of the Senate and the first regular session of the 19th Congress is hereby called to order. To lead us in prayer today is our distinguished colleague, Senator Rafi Tulfo. Atin pong alalahanin na tayo po'y nasa presensya ng Panginoon. Matthew chapter 14, verse 16 to 20 ang mahimalang pagpapakain sa liman libo. Sabi ni Yesus sa kanyang mga disipulo, hindi na sila kailangan umalis, kayo magpakain sa kanila. Sumagot sila, wala po tayong pagkain kundi limang tinapay at dalawang isda. Dalin niyo rito, sabi ni Yesus, kinuha ang limang tinapay at dalawang isda. Tumingin siya sa langit at nagpasalamat sa Diyos. Kinangkatiatian niya ang mga ito at iniutos sa mga alagad na ipamahagi iyon sa mga tao. Nakakain at nabusog ang lahat. Panginoon, gaya po ng mga disipulo, kami po'y lumalapit sa inyo dahil hindi po sapat ang meron kami upang matugunan ang pangailangan ng taong bayan. Kaya't inaalay namin sa inyo ang lahat ng aming ginagawa dito. Inaalay po namin ang mga talakay, talakayan, pag-aaral at pagsusulat ng mga batas. Inaalay po namin ang lahat ng ito sa inyong mapaghimalang kamay upang ito ay gawin ninyong sapat para sa mga tao na umaasang ang kanilang gutom ay mapapawi. Panginoon, muli po kami nagpapasalamat sa pagkakataong makapagsilbi sa bayan at maging instrumento ng inyong pagmamahal dito sa mundo. Amen. 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 Secretary, please call the roll of members. Roll call of members. The Honorable Senator Angara, Senator Binay, Senator Cayetano Alan, Senator Cayetano Pia, Senator De La Rosa, Senator Ejercito, Senator Escudero, Senator Estrada, Senator Gachalian, Senator Go, Senator Ontiveros, Senator Lapid, Senator Legarda, Senator Marcos, Senator Padilla, Senator Pimentel, Senator Poe, Senator Revilla, Senator Tolentino, Senator Tulfo, Senator Villanueva, Senator Villar Cynthia, Senator Villar Mark, the Senate President. With 22 senators present, the chair declares the presence of a quorum. Majority Leader. Yes, Mr. President. Mr. President, at this juncture, may I be allowed to just acknowledge some guests from the gallery? Uh, the delegation from the Bangsamoro Transition Authority, BARM, which includes the Secretariat, uh, Plenary Bills and Index, and the Journal Division headed by uh, Director Jaime Ayub. They are here, and uh, we wanted to acknowledge and uh, welcome them to their Senate. Oh, they're there. They're there. Salam alaikum, brothers. Thank you. Mr. President, we also have with us the uh, Mayor of uh, Cabangon Sambales and Council, Mayor Ronaldo Apostol. Kabang Mayor. Kabangan, Mr. President. Mayor Ronaldo Apostol, guest of our dear colleague, Senator Jingo Estrada. Kabangan uh, Sambales. Mali itong I believe we also have, uh, well, together with my friend, Mr. Charlie Llamas, uh, we have the president of one of the state universities. Yes, uh, uh, they're here, Mr. President, and uh, huh? we welcome them, uh, Mr. President. Huh? Laguna State Laguna. Polytechnic. University is yes, with Mr. us, the president. president. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Welcome, welcome to your Senate, everyone. Welcome to your Senate. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that we dispense with the reading of the journal of the 43rd session, Monday, January 30, 2023, and consider the same as approved. There's no objection to the motion. The motion is approved. Mr. President, I move that we proceed with the reference of business. With no objection to the motion, the majority floor leader, let us proceed, the secretary. Bills on first reading, Senate number 1753, strengthening the office of the Government Corporate Council by rationalizing, further professionalizing its organization, appropriating funds therefore, Senator Angara. The Committees on Human Rights, Civil Service, 
and Finance. 1754, Strengthening the Early Childhood Care Development System, amending for the purpose section 6, 9, and 11 of RA 10410, and appropriating funds therefore, Senator. To the Committees on Basic Education, Women and Children. 1755, creating a barangay to be known as Barangay Dengao in Tinok, Ifugao, and appropriating funds therefore, Senator Marcos. To the Committee on Rules. 1756, establishing a, uh, a hospital in Kalasyao, Pangasinan, to be known as the Kalasyao District Hospital, appropriating funds therefore, Senator Marcos. To the Committee on Rules. 1757, providing for the conversion of the Suyo Sigao del Pilar Road, located in the province of Ilocos Sur, into a national road, appropriating funds therefore, Senator Marcos. To the Committee on Rules. 1758, converting the provincial road stretching from Barangay Mabini Pintor Union, Municipality of Gamu, to Mangkuram Lulutan. City of Ilagan, all of the province of Isabela into a national road, appropriating funds therefore, Senator Marcos. To the Committee on Rules. 1759, converting the name of Barangay San Mariano in Bantay, Ilocos Sur, to its original name, Barangay Salakong, Senator Marcos. To the Committee on Rules. 1760, mandating the establishment of public crematoriums in cities and municipalities and extending free cremation services to indigent families and amending for such purpose the local government code and the code of sanitation, Senator Tulfo. To the Committees on Local Government, Health and Demography and Finance. 1761, defining and providing for more severe penalties for large-scale exploration, exploitation of corals and coral reefs, taking endangered species and other similar acts of destruction of marine resources, further amending for the purpose certain provisions of RA 8550 as amended by RA 10654, Senator Tulfo. To the Committees on Agriculture, Food and Food, Environment, Natural Resources. 1762, prohibiting the use of plastic posters during the campaign season, amending for the purpose Section 3 of RA 9006 as amended, otherwise known as the Fair Election Act, Senator Tulfo. To the Committee on Electoral Reforms and People's Participation. 1763, promoting cooperative farming and providing incentives for effective implementation, Senator Tulfo. To the Committees on Agriculture and Ways and Means. 1764, providing for the lifetime validity of person with dis disability identification cards, amending for the purpose RA 7277, as amended by RA 9442 and RA 10524, Senator Tulfo. To the Committee on Social Justice, Welfare, and Rural Development. 1765, providing protection, security, and benefits for new media workers, Senator Lapid. Committees on Labor and Employment, Public Information, Mass Media. 1766, granting full insurance coverage to all qualified agrarian reform beneficiaries of the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program. Amending for the purpose RA 6657 as amended by RA 9700, otherwise known as the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Law of 1988, Senator Lapid. Committees on Agriculture, Food, and Finance. 1767, providing for free freight services and the transportation of relief goods to calamity stricken areas, Senator Lapid. Committee of Public Services. 1768, declaring the Binyan, Binyan Heritage District in the city of Binyan a National Historical Cultural Heritage Zone, appropriate funds therefore and, and for other purposes, Senator Lapid. Committees on Culture and Arts, Tourism and Finance. 1769, an act to designate the sixth day of January of every year as a special working holiday to be known as Tandansora Day, mandating concerned agencies to conduct events during its observance, appropriate funds therefore and for other purposes, Senator Lapid. To the Committees on Basic Education and Finance. 1770, creating a barangay to be known as Barangay Ibayong in Banawe, province of Ifugao, Senator Marcos. Committee on Rules. 1771, converting the Mountain Province Ilocosur Road via the Kudak Pilipil, Pilipil Road into a national road and appropriating funds therefore, Senator Marcos. To the Committee um, Rules. Rules. 1772, establishing technical education skills development training and assessment centers in Municipality of Libyo, province of Dinagat Islands, and appropriate funds therefore, Senator Marcos. Committees on Higher Technical Vocational Education Finance. 1773, an act establishing a TESDA Training and Assessment Center in Antipolo, province of Rizal, to be known as the Antipolo City Training Center and Assessment Center. Appropriate funds therefore, Senator Marcos. Committee on Higher Education and Finance. 1774, increasing the bed capacity of the Benguet General Hospital in the Municipality of La Trinidad, Benguet from 200 to 400 beds placing the hospital under the direct supervision and control of the DOH and appropriate funds therefore, Senator Marcos. Meeting rules. 1775, requiring all government and non-government offices and establishments to adopt policies to prevent and address the acts of bullying and other similar acts in their workplace, Senator Tulfo. The Committee on Civil Service and Labor. 1776, providing HMO benefits to all government employees in the Philippines and appropriate funds therefore, Senator Tulfo. 
So the Committee is on Civil Service and Finance. 1777, regulating the ownership and operation of drones by private persons at our tool for. To the Committee is on Public Services and Trade and Commerce. 1778, repealing RA 4635, setting national policies on the commercial importation of used textiles and for other purposes at our tool for. The Committee is on Trade and Commerce and Ways and Means. 1779, right sizing the national government to improve public service delivery and for other purposes at our tool for. To the Committees on Civil Service, Government Reorganization of Finance. 1780, separating the Ifogao State University Poche Campus in Alfonso Lista, Ifogao, from the IFSU in the municipality of Lamut, province of Ifogao, converting it into a state college to be known as the Eastern Cordillera State College of Agriculture, Science and Technology, integrating therewith the IFSU Lupao Campus, henceforth to be known as the Escas Lupau Campus and appropriate in funds, therefore, Senator Marcos. Committees on Higher Technical Education Education, Ways and Means of Finance. 1781, dividing Barangay Poblacion in the municipality of La Paz, province of Agra, into distinct and independent barangays to be known as Barangay North Poblacion and Barangay South Poblacion, Senator Marcos. The Committee on Rules. 1782, converting the La Paz District Hospital in the municipality of La Paz, province of Abra, into a general hospital under the full authority and technical supervision of the DOH to be known as the La Paz General Hospital, increasing its bed capacity from 25 beds to 100 beds and appropriating funds, therefore, Senator Marcos. To the Committee on Rules. Resolutions. Proposed Senate Resolution Number 382, congratulating and commending Sandrex Gainsan for winning the gold medal in the Kuangshu event of the 8th Junior Wushu Championship held in Tangerang, Indonesia, Senator Villanueva. To the Committee on Rules. 383, congratulating and commending Sofiel Prahati de la Cruz for winning two gold medals and one silver medal for the Philippines in the 2022 International Federation of Sport Climbing Asian Kids Championship held in Jams had poor India, Senator Villanueva. Median rules. 384, recognizing, congratulating jo Jovan Medallo, Renz Laquel, and Chen Yozores for their stellar performances at the Asian Kickboxing Championship 2022, Senator Villanueva. Committee rules. 385, directing the appropriate Senate committee to conduct an inquiry on the state of food security in the Philippines, Senator Villanueva. Committee on Agriculture and Food. 386, directing the Committee on Tourism to inquire into the current capacity of our Air Force to receive influx of travelers and tourists as our, as our country opens borders for tourism, Senator Binay. Committee on Tourism and Public Services. 387, recognizing and commending the outstanding Filipino TOEFL awardees for 2022 for their exemplary contributions to nation building, Senator Revilla Jr. To the Committee on Rules. 388, congratulating and recognizing Filipina Beach Vol Volleyball Power Duo, Cherry Ann C.C. Rondina and Jovelyn Gonzaga, for winning the championship in volleyball World Beach Pro Tour Futures held on December 9 to 12, 2022 in Subic Sambales, Senator Revilla Jr. The committee in rules. 389, recognizing and commending the 2022 Outstanding Rural Women for being role models for women empowerment, Senator Revilla Jr. The committee in rules. 390, directing the appropriate committees of the Senate to conduct an inquiry on the recent technical glitch in the country's air traffic management system with a view to improving the Philippines' overall air traffic services utilizing it as an engine of further economic growth and align, aligning the relevant agencies, agencies' plans with the goals of the Philippine Development Plan 2023 to 2028 to spur the economy, revitalize the tourism sector, and create more opportunities for job generation, Senator Villanueva. To the Committee on Public Services. 391, directing the Senate Committee on Public Services to conduct an inquiry on the shutdown of Philippine airspace on January 1, 2023, with the end of view evaluating Philippine airport operations and management, including its existing facilities and equipment, assessing the shutdown, tourism, and economic impacts when protecting the rights of the passengers for comfort and efficiency, Senator Revilla Jr. To the Committee of Public Services. 392, directing the appropriate Senate Committee to conduct an inquiry in aid of urgent remedial legislation on the reported power outage and technical issues in the Ninoy Aquino International Airport on January 1, 2023, which resulted in the cancellation of hundreds of flights, inconvenience of thousands of passengers, and the shutdown of the Philippine airspace, thereby further adversely up, up impacting the image of the country as a tourism destination and hurting the national economy, Senator Estrada. To the Committee of Public Services. 393, congratulating and commending the Philippine contingent to the 2022 Asian Kickboxing Championships held in Bangkok, Thailand, for winning four gold, one silver, and six bronze medals, Senator Estrada. Committee rules. 394, directing the Committee on Labor, Employment, and Human Resources Development and other appropriate committees of the Senate to conduct an inquiry 
on the government programs and initiatives to prepare and protect the banana industry from, from the further spread of the TR4 fungus and other diseases and further expand the potential of the banana industry as an employment generator in the country, Senator Villanueva. To the Committee on Rules. Oh, sorry, Committee on Agriculture, Labor and Employment. 395, recognizing and congratulating the Philippine wrestling team for their outstanding performance at the 2022 Southeast Asian Wrestling Championships, Senator Villanueva. Committee on Rules. 396, congratulating the Philippine kickboxing delegation for the exceptional performances at the 2022 Asian Kickboxing Championships, Central Villanueva. The committee rules. 397, congratulating the Philippine Junior National Swimming Team for the exceptional performance at the 44th Southeast Asian Age Group Swim Championships, Central Villanueva. To the committee rules. 398, recognizing and congratulating the team behind the short film, The Headhunter's Daughter for winning the short film Grand Jury Prize at 2022 Sundance Film Festival, Senator Villanueva. To the Committee on Rules. 399, recognizing and congratulating the team behind the film, Leonor Will Never Die, for winning the Special Jury Prize for Innovative Spirit at 2022 Sundance Film Festival, Senator Villanueva. Committee on Rules. 400, directing the Senate Committee on Public Services to conduct an inquiry on, in aid of legislation on the recent airport navigation system fiasco that paralyzed the operation of the NAIA, risked the safety of tra travelers and post national security concerns with the NNV of strengthening and ensuring safety in the aviation industry and prevention of any other similar incidents in the future. Senator Ejercito. Median Public Services. 401, directing the appropriate Senate Committee to conduct an inquiry into the New Year system failure crisis at the Nino Aquino International Airport, resulting in the breakdown of air traffic control and the disruption of a total of 282 flights affecting around 56,000 passengers at Ontiveros. The Committee on Public Services. Um, Joy Peter. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, as uh, you acknowledged a while ago, we would just like to uh, again put on record that the President of LSPU, Dr. Mario Briones, with the... Uh, yes. VP for Admin Engineer Beltran Pedrigal, Engineer Manuel Luis Alvarez, Attorney Rushid J. Sancon, and Punong Barangay Vicente Carlos Yamas are all here today. And uh, we uh, wanted to put on record that uh, we appreciate their uh, presence in this August chamber. Welcome to your Senate, sir. Gentlemen, ladies. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, uh, with the uh, consent of the body, I move that we resume consideration Senate Bill number. <coughs> 1604 under committee report number 17. This is Aral Program Act, uh, Mr. President. Uh, there being no objection to the motion of the majority floor leader, motion is approved. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, the parliamentary status of this uh, measure is that we have sponsored the measure, and uh, I now move that we open the period of interpellations and debate and recognize the sponsor, no other than the chairperson of the uh, Senate committee, on uh, basic education, Senator Win Gatchelian, and to interpolate our minority floor leader, Senator Aquilino Coco Pimentel III. We recognize a distinguished sponsor, Senator Win Gatchelian, and to interpolate a distinguished minority floor leader, Senator Coco Pimentel III. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> With the permission of our distinguished and very hardworking colleague, the chair of our uh, basic education committee. Uh, I'd like to uh, start my interpolation, Mr. President, with the understanding that uh, I know you. We are we are pressed for time because we have uh, an official event where senators have been invited. So, if I could just start the interpolation, Mr. President, but please do not expect me to finish the interpolation today, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, with yes, Mr. Chairman. With, uh, yes, thank you. Yes, I'll be more than happy to receive questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. 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 President. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this, the measure we are discussing is an act, uh, has the title, an act establishing an academic recovery and accessible learning program, appro appropriating funds, therefore, and for other purposes. Uh, as I understand the measure, is this just a uh, supplement to the regular curriculum of our uh, basic education, Mr. President? Uh, no, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, this is the, um, the bill has two objectives, and the objectives is to um, help out students who did not enroll 
during school year 2020, sorry, 2020 to 2021. And those who fall below the minimum proficiency levels required in language, math, and science. So meaning, Mr. President, uh, it will be a continuing program because those students who are who fall below the minimum proficiency levels will be uh, assisted uh, to be able to improve in their uh, in their uh, in the language of math, language, and science, Mr. President. So it it, it will be a continuous continuing program, Mr. President. Uh, so it becomes part of the uh, cur curriculum, Mr. President. Uh, it will not be part of the curriculum, Mr. President. Uh, it's, a, it's a program outside of the curriculum. So it's akin to a tutoring program or a uh, remediation program, Mr. President, because we detected that the pandemic caused a lot of damage in terms of uh, the proficiency levels of our students, Mr. President. Uh, yesterday, Mr. President, there was uh, some sort of a summit an education summit held in a nearby hotel. Uh, I have not really read uh, about the event in detail, but I think, Mr. President, that uh, our Senate President was present. I was present the, as well, the, Mr. President. The chairman was also present. I think the program is called Matatag. The, the theme is called Matatag, Mr. President. It, it centers theme, okay. on access, quality, uh, equity, and well-being, Mr. President. Yes, Mr. President, and then this measure was, was filed before that summit, so may we know uh, from the chairman himself, Mr. President, if from what he got from the summit, if some of the ideas expressed in the summit or to yeah. be pursued by the DepEd would touch on some of the ideas, uh, concepts, and plans uh, mentioned in the measure that we are discussing. Thank you for that question, Mr. President. The, the summit yesterday uh, presented a list of solutions to a list of problems. No? And uh, the summit yesterday was quite comprehensive in terms of the discussion on what our students and what our education system is experiencing right now. The only common um, uh, direction between this bill and that bill is the focus on numeracy and literacy, meaning reading and counting. You know? uh, this bill aims to improve the proficiency levels on those fundamental skills because if a child cannot read, if a child cannot count, it's very difficult for the child to progress throughout life. So this bill aims to focus on uh, language, which is basically reading and comprehension, mathematics, which is counting, and science, which is the base for innovation, Mr. President. So we're not going to touch on history. We're not going to touch on um, uh, the other subjects, like um, uh, education pang, uh, pang papaka, education pang sa pagpapakatao, which is basically history, and the other subject. Sorry, sorry, Mr. President, uh, and other subjects. No? So basically, this bill will just focus on math, science, and uh, English. Math, science, and reading, to be exact. So, uh, Mr. President, thank you for uh, the information shared by our chairman. So, uh, so is it uh, correct to say that the measure that we are now <clears throat> uh, discussing does not need any change uh, even after the presentation of the Matatag uh, program uh, yesterday with the Department of Education. No, Mr. President. Mr. President, from what I gathered yesterday, the uh, Vice President and DepEd intends to intensify its, um, uh, its uh, programs on math and reading. You know? And that's very clear yesterday. In fact, I wrote that in my notes. This bill aims to do the same. Mm -hmm. So it will complement uh, that direction in so far as reading and math. But in terms of, let's say, curriculum change, uh, the other subjects like trig trigonometry, history, uh, the other subjects, this bill will not touch on that, Mr. Mr. President. 
So while DepEd will pursue its, uh, its um, uh, activities, this bill will be outside of those regular activities because this will only touch on students who are having problems with those three subjects, namely language, math, and science. The coverage, uh, Mr. President, is found in Section 2. So, yes, Mr. Uh, President. Th th these are the learners which are uh, to be covered by the measure. Is the coverage uh, mandatory or optional? It's uh, mandatory, Mr. President. So those who did not enroll uh, starting school year 2020, which is the pandemic year, and those who fall below the minimum proficiency level. So we expanded it, Mr. President, because uh, even prior to the pandemic, uh, we also saw that a lot of students fell below the minimum proficiency levels. And we need to assist them. We need to come up with an intervention program so they can uh, catch up with their peers at the same grade level, Mr. President. So it's mandatory, uh, Mr. President? It's uh, mandatory, yes. Mr. President. And then, uh, in, in paragraph 2 of section 2, for those similarly situated in the private schools, this is optional. Yes, Mr. President. Because they, they need to request. Upon request, uh, yes. Mr. So they, they, they make the request to the DepEd. Yes, Mr. President. And the tutorial activities happen where? Um, are, are, are made where, Mr. President? In the private school premises or in the public, public school premises? For the private school, school students. In safe schools? Ah, yeah, yeah. But the safe schools is... Uh, uh, for the public school, Mr. President, um, the local school will, will work with the LGUs because the LGUs also has the mandate to provide um, safe areas conducive for tutorial lessons. For example, if that, that will be happening outside the schools, uh, the local division will work with the local government units to find a suitable place. For private schools, uh, they have to discuss it with, their, with the school division on where uh, the tutorial will happen, Mr. President. Uh, so so uh, details are to be determined in the IRR, Mr. President? Yeah, but where is the safe schools here? I mean, provision. The safe school? Schools in here. Ayan, safe learning environment. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. President, on section 16, uh, it's written here the DepEd, in collaboration with the LGU concern, shall provide a safe learning environment for face-to-face -face tutorials, giving due consideration to accessibility, cost-effectiveness, and health safety. So um, because we, we are uh, also expecting that the tutorial might happen in communities, in uh, remote areas, so the school needs to work with the local government units in order to find that safe learning environment. So in both cases, Mr. President, they have to work with the uh, local government unit. So uh, at, at least we have established today that the ARAL program is mandatory for, yes, Mr. President. for those covered in the public school system. Because uh, I had the impression all along that this would be optional because, you know, uh, the, <coughs> the concept which comes to mind when I first read the measure is that this is a tutorial session. And if it's a tutorial, it supplements the, the study of the learner. But, you know, that should be at the option of the learner. So now if we make this mandatory, meaning to say that the covered learners are now expected to extend their school time by the number of hours required under the program. And how many hours would this be, uh, Mr. President, uh, on a per school day uh, basis, Mr. President? Oh, 
But Mr. President, uh, during our technical working group, Mr. President, um, our experts advise us that there's no single solution for students who are qualified in this bill. Uh, each student will have their own uh, sets of difficulty, their own challenges, and it's important that the intervention is learner-based. Of course, tutor is the most popular. It can be one-on-one -on -one tutoring, it can be group tutoring, it can even be class tutoring. Remediation is also a popular uh, approach, uh, but we will leave that to the DepEd, to the to the school to design what type of intervention programs um, uh, is appropriate for the child, Mr. President. So in section 4B, uh, we mentioned there that uh, the intervention program should be well-designed and it should be learner-centered approach. So it, it should be what the learner needs based on their assessment and based on their analysis of the uh, uh, requirements of the learner. So it's, it's not going to be a one-size-fits-all, meaning we'll get a, a, a teacher and, and implement a tutoring program. It can be, uh, it can be a one-on-one -on -one approach. It can be several approaches. It's important to determine first what the child needs in order to catch up, in order to be at par with, with, with uh, their peers. Yes, but uh, since this is mandatory, it be, from the point of view of the child learner, it becomes part of his uh, or the consequences of uh, his enroll his or her enrollment in school ganun po mangyayari yon uh, so there will be additional hours spent by the learner in school most likely in school so the question now is don't we have a problem with space in schools uh, I thought we have do, we have, do we still have ships in schools uh, it, as, of it, this, uh, as of today? It depends, Mr. President. Um, in, in urban areas such as Metro Manila, uh, some, some, some areas, some schools will have uh, overpopulation. But in rural areas, typically, it's, the average is about 30 students per classroom. But, Mr. President, uh, what the approach here is really what the learner needs. And... Um, uh, the learner might need only 30 minutes of intervention, might need an hour of intervention. It really depends on um, what the learner will, uh, will require in order to catch up. So part of the, uh, the requirements of the program is an assessment. No? We need to do an assessment first. And the reason why we also made it mandatory because we cannot allow some students to fall behind. No? Um, all students should be able to be at par with their peers and to catch up. You know? So um, if we make it uh, optional, we will have a case wherein some students will fall behind their peers and some students will not, uh, will have difficulty in terms of, uh, in terms of their, they, they call it foundational skills such as reading and math. You know? So in order to limit time, we also limited the number of subjects that this bill will cover, mm. which is the fundamental subjects. No? Tatlo. Tatlo lang. Yeah. So, uh, ma math, science, and reading? And reading. Okay. So, uh, Mr. President, uh, wouldn't the math teacher know who are those lagging behind in his or her math class? Same with the science and reading teachers. Yes, Mr. President. So... Actually, there's no need to assess the, yeah. on a per-learner basis, feedback from the teacher. He can already identify if, the, so if that student is weak in all three subjects, his name will appear, uh, his or her yeah. name will appear three times. And then intervention can, can uh, already be done. Can it not be done during the regular class hour yeah. for that particular subject? Because the teacher knows... I have 30 students, 10, 10 are re re really lagging behind, they lack, uh, uh, they lack the necessary competence in, in, in the subject. So I will, during class hour, I can make them do some other kind of work to catch up. Is, 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 is that possible, uh, Mr. President? Yes, Mr. President, that's highly possible, Mr. President. In fact, uh, 
uh, some students may just require extra attention in class. Uh, so you don't need to have uh, remedial sessions or tutoring sessions. So that's possible, Mr. President. So in other words, uh, students can pursue their normal class activities and teachers will just take note that some students will need extra attention in order to catch up. So uh, it's really a, um, it really depends on uh, the situation inside the classroom because not all students are the same, Mr. President. We, and we really tried to avoid having a one-size-fits-all approach you know, because uh, the students will have different needs, the students will have probably different um, uh, levels of competencies, and we will leave that to the teachers to determine. Yes, uh, Mr. President, but uh, in the context of the RL measure or the RL bill, we have limited ourselves to three subjects, math, science, and reading. So we can re actually already imagine what will happen on the ground when, when, when we have this uh, law or what it, it hopes to achieve. My question is, cannot the objectives be achieved even without this law becoming a measure, but the idea being adopted by DepEd and already implemented in the regular math science and reading class hours. Mm -hmm. Because what will happen is, the student covered by the RL program, it being now mandatory, will be required to spend extra hours for either math, science, or reading, or any or all, the combination or all of the three. And yet, he, he, that covered student also spends the regular class hour for math, science, and reading. So, the intervention should have already been made during the regular yeah. class hour, uh, Mr. President. I get your point, Mr. President. That is the best case scenario and most practical scenario, Mr. President. But uh, we cannot isolate the fact that some students are lagging. And because of the pandemic, uh, some students are, uh, are in dire need of intervention. And we, we, have, a, we have experience uh, in this type of intervention in Valenzuela, Mr. President. Uh, we found out that uh, our students from grade one to grade three, a big chunk of them cannot read. No? I think almost f half, no? 40% to 50%. And uh, what we did is we mandated them to come to school uh, one hour every Saturday in addition uh, to teach them simply how to read. No? And the, in Valenzuela, we tapped our college students as tutors you know, uh, for them to teach the students how to read. That is also the same uh, concept that we applied here. Uh, in the best case scenario, it's a teacher that will help the students catch up, but there are some cases that you need extra help or extra intervention for the teacher. So in the bill, what we propose also is to tap college students. If you're a college student, if you're an education student, uh, you can qualify as part of the tutor. So uh, DepEd now will have a, um, uh, a, a, uh, an army or a, a uh, contingent of uh, tutors that can help the student in case that the student needs extra help, whether it's after class or it's Saturday. At least there's now a ready contingent that can help the student. Uh, yes, Mr. President. Uh Sometimes uh, a student gets a tutor so that he will uh, be ahead of their subject matter. The RL program is for those who are behind to allow them to catch up. Yeah. So if, if these learners have regular math, science, and reading classes, and no intervention to catch up is made during those regular class hours. So are we allowing them to lag further behind and then resort to Aral for them to catch up? I mean, so parang sayang. I mean, we do. so the intervention, the flexibility must already be with the math, science, and reading teacher to have some segmentation in his or her class 
so that he or she will now allow the teacher, will allow those who are falling behind to catch up during the regular class hours. Yeah. Kasi otherwise, if aral pala sa Sabado, from Monday to Friday, we are allowing those lagging behind to lag further behind. I mean, that's uh, a possibility, uh, Mr. President. Sa yung time eh. Yeah, I, 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 I get the point of the good minority leader, Mr. President. Um, I, I am absolutely sure that a teacher would want to um, uh, want to teach and want to pass all their students. No, I think that's their uh, moral conviction to make sure that their students are learning, and eventually after uh, the after the, um, the the grade period, they will pass. But we also have to admit that some students are, are in need of additional uh, help in terms of uh, fundamental skills. We're just isolating fundamental skills because these are the skills that they need in order to, um, uh, in order to participate in complicated, much more complicated subjects, Mr. President. So um, definitely, uh, the this, this teacher will try their best to teach the student right there and then. But in an event that the student will need additional help, at least DepEd can tap other warm bodies, other contingent, other personalities who can help them uh, train, teach, tutor the students in order to uh, acquire minimum proficiency levels. So that is the concept, Mr. President. We're, we're not encouraging uh, uh, students to be isolated right away. That's why the assessment here is very important. The, in the provision, there's, there's a provision here, section four, uh, the determination and assessment of learners is very important. And um, that will be the uh, process in order to know which learners uh, need additional intervention programs uh, in order for the learner to catch up. So uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. At least uh, we have uh, discussed the concept behind the measure. Uh, if the chairman will allow, we, uh, we intend to discuss uh, further the concepts, the general principles, and also go over the bill in, in, in detail uh, at some other future time, uh, Mr. President. Mr. President, and yeah, I, definitely. But Mr. President, with the indulgence of uh, the good minority leader, uh, if she, he will allow me to show some statistics uh, on why we saw this is uh, necessary, aside from... Uh, DepEd's um, wholehearted support for this bill. If, if um, the good minority leader will allow us to uh, show on the slide. So just a few slides, Mr. President, on learning loss. And this is one of, one of the most important uh, uh, statistic or data that I can show. Uh, Pre-pandemic level, and let me just flash on the slide. Slide number seven. <coughs> The number of students, the number of 10-year-olds who can read and understand a simple story pre-pandemic is about 69%. No? So meaning only 30% can understand. The 69% cannot understand. Because of the pandemic, it uh, became worse. 90% of our 10-year-olds cannot read and understand simple, read or understand a simple story. And this is from the World Bank. At the same time, there's a metric called learning loss in terms of um, LEAS, which is um, learning adjusted years of schooling. In short, this is slide number six, Mr. President. Pre-pandemic level, because we are in a 12-year uh, system, our students in the Philippines only learn 7.5 years in terms of learning because of quality, because of number of days, because of many factors. But because of the, post, because of the pandemic, that 7.5 years uh, was reduced to 5.8 years. So meaning, even though the student uh, attends school for 12 years, the student will only learn 5.8 years of learning. Mm -hmm. And the uh, USAID um, also conducted what they call a rapid uh, assessment. No, it, it's a comprehensive rapid literacy assessment uh, sponsored by USAID. 
And in um, and this is only in literacy, meaning reading lang. No, uh, on slide eleven, just goes to show for grade one, only forty percent of our grade one. This is NCR, no. This is in NCR. Only forty percent in uh, uh, NCR uh, is grade ready, meaning they're ready to uh, uh, they're ready for school in terms of reading. No, for grade two. Uh, it's only 36%. In grade three, is uh, 25%. This determines the readiness of our students in terms of reading. And this is already in NCR, wherein there is um, internet connection, there is connectivity, uh, and there are qualified teachers. If you go to the rural areas, let's say Region 5 in Bicol, it's even worse. No? Uh, the USAID study showed us that only eight uh, sh showed us that uh, that only uh, sorry that 85 percent of our uh, basic education sorry 85 percent of our grade one is not ready and then 75 percent uh, is not read uh, sorry balik uh, only 85 percent tama not not grade ready are not sorry ready. only 85 percent is uh 85 percent is not ready yeah. no, na hilo lang ako, mr president yeah. 75 percent is not ready and 64 percent is not ready for uh grade three sorry for the confusion yes. mr president so this determines the readiness uh, conducted by an independent group uh usaid mr president so we took all of this uh, information and um, and based on our analysis that we need in, in an intervention program, a massive intervention program to raise the readiness of our uh, students, Mr. President. So those are the numbers that we saw uh, during the hearing, Mr. President. So thank you for the information, Mr. President. Uh, when we resume... Uh, our interpolation, we will raise uh, the question of the budget, uh, the, budget the budget implication of the program, uh, the manpower needs of the program, and uh, we intend to revisit the mandatory uh, nature of the program, Mr. President, because if this is, ma, 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 the, the, the point of this representation, Mr. President, is this is, using the words of the, our chairman, a massive intervention program, a mandatory massive intervention program. But isn't the most massive inter intervention program already our public education system? The so, I mean, so uh, the adjustment should be done already in that uh, usual or normal massive intervention progr program called the public education system. The, the most massive intervention program is going back to school. I think that is the, the best uh, uh, intervention program that our uh, government impl implemented. But we have to admit, you know, we have uh, almost 23 million students in our public schools, and they're not in the same level in terms of proficiency. Some of them... Uh, especially the uh, most marginalized ones are not at the same, not in the same level with some of their peers, and uh, that's why, based on the data that we saw, uh, we saw the need to come up with an intervention program that can tap other qualified personalities that can help DepEd. I think within DepEd alone, it's going to be very difficult, and it will take time. So, with additional help from existing um, uh, infrastructure, no? such as students studying in college, students taking up teaching courses or teacher courses. Uh, those are existing warm bodies that are uh, ready to help DepEd in terms of providing uh, intervention programs. And, you know, uh, Mr. President, because we're talking about fundamentals here, right? The, in the learner has been assessed to lack the fundamentals in math, science, and reading needed for his or her particular grade level to understand the, yeah. the uh, 
the subject matter in yeah. math, science, and reading for that grade level where he or she is. Yeah. So she, he or she lacks that uh, the fun, so-called fundamentals. Yes, correct, Mr. So, President. And the inadequ inadequacy in the fundamentals may not only be attributable to mental or intellectual capacity. Sometimes maybe there's a reason absent. So, you know, so I think we have to entertain that possibility. So if a student is already lagging behind due to numerous absences in the regular class hours and our intervention mm -hmm. is a mandatory additional hour, uh, time spent in school, then I do not know if uh, those, those with that kind of a problem can be benefited by the RL program because yeah. uh, absence na nga, it was the physical absence from school which led to the assessment that he or she is lacking in the fundamentals, uh, Mr. President. Yeah. Well, Mr. President, it's really not uh, going to be the first option. Intervention will not be the first option, for sure. I th our teachers are trained to uh, teach our students in order for them to learn and to uh, be at par with their peers in, their, in the same grad, grade level. Uh, teachers will not immediately throw the child to a tutoring program or an intervention program. Uh, but we have to admit that some students, because of the pandemic, lag behind no? in terms of the fundamental or the foundational skills, and we need to help them. Uh, if they will be let alone, left alone, uh, they might pass because out of uh, pity, but they will have very difficult time in order, very difficult time um, uh, participating in the next or the higher grade level. And that will be a problem, uh, a long-term problem for us. So uh, we saw it fit that um, uh, a few hours of intervention program, and the hours can be as, 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 as short as one hour, maybe two hours. But based on our experience in Valenzuela, um, a two-hour reading program every, once a week helps a lot. No? And that's only... Is that mandatory? I mean, you're, you're it's mandatory. In, in we made it mandatory. And uh, <clears throat> that's only, that only ran for two months. Uh, because our theory there and our experience there is it didn't do anything because the, uh, the, the, the other option is not do anything. Eh? If you don't do anything, those students will naturally fall behind, probably uh, fall to the, to the, probably retain or, or not pass to the next grade level, and probably drop out. Uh, the students who have extreme difficulty in classes uh, will probably drop out and work or, or do, do something else. You know? So that's what we're trying to avoid also, the dropping out of students uh, in our school system. So uh, when we resume our uh, interpolation, Mr. President, maybe we should be informed more of uh, what happened in Valenzuela. If it was a mandatory program, uh, I'm sure not not, not all were able to comply, so what was the consequence of those who were failed to, to uh, uh, comply with the mandatory character of the program? But at any rate, Mr. President, it's already past 4 p.m., so time flies uh, very fast when you're enjoying what you do, uh, <laughs> you're doing, uh, Mr. President. So, so we are we're enjoying our discussion here with our... Uh, uh, well-prepared, well-informed uh, chairman of our committee. So if I could uh, request for a suspension of my interpolation, but w when we resume, uh, let's no we can talk right. about the budgetary impact, uh, the manpower source, maybe the number of those covered, and then if we can revisit and, and discuss again uh, why the need for the mandatory nature of the program, Mr. President? Yes. Among yes. others, among others, Mr. Yes, President. Yes, Mr. President, thank you very much for uh, uh, the questions of our um, good minority leader. Definitely, um, it enriched our records, and uh, we'll be more than happy to uh, discuss the bill uh, during the next session. Thank you very much, Mr. President. So, uh, we suspend, uh, Mr. President, our interpolation. Session suspended.
So, President, I move that we suspend consideration of Senate Bill Number 1604. I so move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? There being none, consideration of Senate Bill Number 1604 is suspended. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that we adjourn the session until 3 o'clock in the afternoon of Wednesday, February 1, 2023. So move, Mr. President. Is there an objection? There being none, the session is adjourned until 3 o'clock in the afternoon of Wednesday, February 1, 2023.